Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Chat. Today we're doing a chat about the sprawl, not about join the anarchy. Oh no. <laughs> uh, how is everyone doing tonight? Today? Today. I just realized I'm streaming during the day. This is very different for me. I'm so used to saying tonight. Um, so let's go ahead and discuss the sprawl. Um, so first things first is I need to prepare next week's session. And this is unusual for me. Well, not really unusual. It's not like I haven't prepared things before for, uh, but um, I guess it's different. Like nobody's seen me prepare stuff because I'm so, improvisational heavy, especially when it comes to Join the Anarchy. So this is kind of different for me on stream, but uh, I'm excited to go ahead and get started. So um, our episode zero, we never got to actually tick the clocks. Uh, so the clocks that you're seeing here for all of the corporations have been ticked upward. Uh, the cast has discussed behind the scenes on Discord what jobs that they wanted, uh, what jobs they wanted to do and involve themselves in, which led to the ticking of these clocks. Um, the they'll go ahead and get into that uh, on the next session. Like we'll do kind of like a quick recap, but um, that's where we're at. So the first step in creating a mission is that we should pick the target of the mission and pick one of the corporations whose clock is relatively low so like 1500 1800 or maybe even just nothing like memory gold so our candidates right now are dynamed syracuse and memory gold i think if anything let me go ahead and give like a um a preview of what we've got so far. So let me go ahead and pull up, let's take away these clocks and pull up my plot notes. So um, the so this is gonna be like, a, they're gonna go ahead and get into this into more detail uh, next session, but generally here's what's going on. Uh, for Dynamed, the reason that that got ticked up to 1800 is that the corporation is def is that, uh, Bing the killer. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at different. These are not my notes. Uh, I have different. Right, let me go. Let me look at my plot map instead. This is. These are things that I'm like considering in the background. So these are what my corporations are currently doing. So let me go ahead and put up my plot map. I'm really proud of this thing. <laughs> I've been. Uh, I've been plot mapping everything that's been going on. So the first part is uh, Angel grudge sniped one of the deans in Dynamed. So she, it was a wet work job, assassinated. So that's job number one. Job number two was a uh, whistleblower's job where uh, his girlfriend at the time for like about a year, Colette, basically used him to get insider info from Syracuse. And she got away with the information. Whistleblower is trying to track her down. And uh, in the process of doing that, Colette uh, inadvertently caused a bunch of Geppetto's gang, the Gunpla, to die uh, while Syracuse was trying to hunt her down because she was hiding out with the Gunpla. Uh, Geppetto's job was he... I see that he doesn't really have a plot map thing there, but uh, essentially his job, if I recall... Let me look at my plot notes. Uh, his job was against uh, Ziggurat, that's right. So he wanted to extract a very advanced AI called Express, and they uh, and they were successful. Everyone got involved in that job. So that was, so that's why they're so high up. And then the last job was 
uh, Sinons, which is he infiltrated Safety Net to release some expose info on Madre, uh, Madre being the face of the company. So the PR has taken a hit and everybody helped on that job as well. So that's why those clocks for those two companies are so high. Zane Ziggurat and Safety Net, they're at 2100. So what I know right now is when they're around, when they're at this level of 2100, the book says that the corporations have taken notice of them. Uh, not, sorry, that the books will take definite action against them. Uh, 1800, right before that, which is where Dynamite is, they've taken notice of them. And then for 1500, they basically have like a file on them. So, um, but they have a file, but they're not, but like vague notes that uh, are inconclusive. But essentially, like they're they're aware of this thing happened, and where do we go? Like if anything comes up again, we at least have this file to compare notes. Um, so I know for sure I don't want Ziggurat or Safety Net to be the corp. And hello, Dirk. Um, welcome. I'm figuring out how to GM the sprawl. I am. I can't say that I'm like super nervous about it, but. I, I wonder how much I can GM prep in 50 minutes. Get uh, excited. Usually, so, okay, so I'm supposed to also be the pre-show for Shattered Isles, but Shattered Isles will not be premiering tonight uh, because they are at Megacon. So it's basically me for an hour and then I gotta go because I'm gonna be GMing Dungeons and Dragons for my tabletop group. So I've been like preparing for that all day. Uh, yeah, well, welcome, welcome. <laughs> yeah, it, it is very interesting. The clock system was really what, like, drew me to this RPG in the first place. So I'm really excited to bring it to life. So, um, things of note also. I want to go back to my, uh, my plot notes here. Um, in addition to the jobs that, they have, that they've already done prior to the game starting. And that what's cool about the Sprawl is that uh, the jobs that they've done off camera, it basically puts them in a in a in the thick of it kind of situation. So they already know each other. They've worked with each other. They have history. There's no need to like get to know each other and stuff. Um, so that's Cool. So I get to just basically kind of go in media's rest, jump into the action. Um, and aside from that, they also have statuses like hunted and owned. Uh, every time a character gets cyberware, the cyberware is uh, has some kind of it comes with some kind of baggage. Uh, and two of those kinds of baggage could be hunted or owned. Hunted meaning that they fuck someone over to get that cyberware, and now they're being hunted down. And owned is that the corporation said, okay, yeah, I'll give you the cyberware, but you owe us. And basically they just lord that over them forever until they can pay off their debt, however much that happens to be. So, um, other things that I thought were interesting uh, were Angel is hunted by Syracuse for her cyberware. She shot a Syracuse employee. I named her Clarissa Gallagher and uh, she pilfered her cyber eyes. So uh, that drew attention from Syracuse for that act. And of note, uh, one of the things that Allison, the player of Angel, brought up was that also, she it drew attention to her from Syracuse for being beautiful. One of the things about this world is that Syracuse uh, likes very likes to invest in beautiful people to become self 2.0s, uh, which is basically like consciousness swapping, sort of like an altered carbon. So, um, so Syracuse saw it, saw that hey, Angel is good looking lady. Uh, and so I decided to put a name to that face, and that is going to be Mimi Price. She is a Syracuse employee who is now obsessed with obtaining her after seeing her. Um, so this is a little thing that I have already that I had already kind of started 
tossing around the old noggin. And, um, and I'm excited to show you what I've come up with, because I think this is how I'm going to open up the sprawl. Um, other things uh, about her, uh, so she's already killed somebody in Dynamed, and so Dynamed is going to be hunting her down. Um, and you can see a couple of other notes there. I have hers, but I don't think any of those are going to play into anything yet. For Whistleblower, he's owned by Syracuse. Uh, he is basically an insider inside of the building. He has a day job with Syracuse, and uh, he that's why nobody has actually met him. He's hiding away in the Syracuse building. So I'll show you what I did with that, and it ties into the Angel storyline. Uh, in addition to that, um, What else? He he has his girlfriend, Colette Otoyemi, who is she really, uh, ran off with that, um, and then also was able to read some of the information um, before she stole it all about uh, information manipulation in Self 2.0. Excuse me. Um, and then, let's see. So, so he is basically... He has a vendetta against Syracuse, and uh, and he's going to stop at nothing to take them down. So this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and tell you what I had planned. Uh, here's like a little look at my mission notes. Uh, I put the agendas and the principles here uh, to kind of get an idea, like in case I need to like, hmm, remind myself what I should be doing as a GM. I've got, the, the book provides an agenda of things like filling the characters' lives with action, intrigue, and complication, entangling them in the sprawl, and playing to find out what happens. Um, so this, I just have that there to help guide me in case I ever get lost. But basically, I feel like this gives me the go-ahead to be absolutely like heartless isn't the word but just like just hammer that home that like people are coming after you from the jump so what i've got going so far is i want whistleblower to be asked by his boss mimi price they don't know that mimi price is his boss yet so this is going to be really fun uh asked to come to her to his to her office and basically put down the file about clarissa gallagher how she's been shot uh that her cybernetics were harvested, shows footage of Angel, who he knows, but he has to let on that he doesn't know her, and basically say, um, since the cameras that caught this belong to our department, and we failed to properly respond in time, it's our responsibility to track this individual down and deliver a report to, a report to Syracuse. You, whistleblower, have 72 hours. And basically, we want a location where we're guaranteed to ambush her and says ambush her, not kill her, because she wants Angel for herself so that she can transfer her body, transfer her consciousness into Angel's body, because she prefers that body over the current one, which is just like getting crow's feet and stuff. It's gross. And like, she's so over this body. Um, so I'm going to actually set a countdown clock and just show you what that's gonna look like. Hopefully nobody's... Uh, so... I gotta, I gotta get good at this, at revealing the clocks. I have them on the GM layer on Roll20. Uh, bing. Okay, so I've got a... The countdown clock is 72 hours to report on Angel's whereabouts. And so, the uh, every 12 hours, I'm going to tick this forward, and when it hits 72, Whistleblower, if he hasn't already, has to make a decision on uh, whether he wants to sell Angel out uh, in order to keep his insider status in Syracuse. So, let me go ahead and hide this before anyone sees it. Because they, they come in and out of this table quite a bit. Bink. All right. No, I didn't. Pff, I didn't even put down put up my clock. I'm sorry. Here, let me. I'll show it. I guess. Uh. 
so anyway so I think that's a cool idea I'm excited to so there it is countdown clock I'm excited to already watch everybody start scrambling and biting their nails and knowing that I'm not fucking around uh, and no I don't feel like I'm an evil GM one of the things uh, of interest here is I did tell them I wanted to open up PvP uh, basically PvP is totally uh, a possibility in the sprawl I want to treat this game like a crime movie uh, every good crime movie there's always that person that you're not sure if you can trust there's always like double and triple agentry there's you know th there are conflicts uh, so I'm hoping that uh, I can already start hammering that home right from the get-go like hey here's a thing that you have to already start concerning yourself over um, as we go into whatever the mission happens to be. Um, I didn't really, I couldn't really think of any other preludes that I wanted to do, but I think I also want to just keep it simple. Um, and the reason, I, as in, I don't want to have a prelude scene with every character, um, because I could, I don't, I have two options. It's either I have Whistleblower targeting Angel from the get-go, but then I guess the reason that I feel weird about it is because Geppetto and Sinon are basically like in the backdrop, like whatever, we got, we don't have double agent things to do. So I, I feel like how many objectives do I want to put down to start messing with people right out the gate, you know? Uh, so we'll see. I, I'm, I want to consider it, but right now I think I'm going to focus more on the, the actual mission. That's what we're all here for to discuss. Right. And then I'm sure if, once I start daydreaming a little more, I'll start weaving in more and more of these, like of these narratives that they've built to further screw them up. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead. So uh, the current status of things is Ziggurat is, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. hold on, because this is actually now different. Syracuse, the clocks were different when I made these notes. Uh, they edited some stuff. So Syracuse uh, has a file uh, on the uh, Colette, or rather on the uh, self 2.0, incident um safety net is trying to locate sinon dynamite is trying to locate angel ziggurat is uh closed in on geppetto to take definite action because they are they basically want to arrest geppetto and uh retrieve the uh, and retrieve express uh, express being that ai that he stole uh, and put into a new body. Then we also have, um, what was the other company? It was a memory gold. Oh no, memory. Yeah, no. Uh, oh no, right. Safety net. Safety net's the one that's here. Memory gold is perfectly fine. They don't give a shit. They're at zero. Um, so safety net is also closed in on the, I'm going to put the team for this one because I'm going to put Geppetto and the team because they all participated in this job and it would feel weird punishing one specific player over another. Um, how rough do I want to be on them right out of the gate? So this is, this is the thing, right? Uh, I want to keep these in mind as third parties. Uh, while they're doing their job, I want this to be a complication that they have to deal with. Um, there's going to be goons, basically. Uh, ziggurat goons and safety net goons. Um, definite action. Uh, so this is probably, since safety net is kind of like the security, uh, I just kind of see them as like an all points bulletin. Um, so there's going to be, so the streets are probably not safe. Uh, 
for them to uh, for them to use openly. At the very least, the main streets. Um. So so yeah, so that's gonna be that's gonna start setting that tone from the get go. So let me go ahead and make sure I highlight this red because that's gonna be something for me to remember. Um, and then Ziggurat is gonna to try to arrest Geppetto and retrieve Express. Um, I'll highlight that red too because I'm not sure how that's going to play out yet. It might be one of those things that I just drop on them at some point when I want to make a move. Um, I don't know if I want them to like go directly to the hideout um, because they don't exactly know who Geppetto is and the Gunpla are. They just know that this, that an individual uh, that this report matches seems like they have this this AI so it, or something like that so something to just keep in mind and, and daydream about uh, in the coming week so uh, so first thing that I want to do now is uh, and hello to everybody new in chat hi uh, first thing I want to do is uh, I want to decide who I want to make the mission against so we had three options we have Syracuse which I'm already utilizing to give a hard bargain to whistleblower so I don't know if I want it to be a job against Syracuse you know it just doesn't it feels like it might be too much um, finagling and also very like honed in on that corporation which could be a good thing if I want to start out you know simple quote unquote um, my goal is even though I already give them a bunch of I'm, give, I'm going to be giving them a bunch of different balls to juggle here, and they have like all of these things already lurking in the in the background against them. That their storyline uh, starts relatively uncomplicated, right? Because I don't want to super confuse them either. Um, that said, I feel like thematically Syracuse would be a hard one to play uh, in in the sense that. If I want it to be a hard bargain, I wonder if it's a good idea to have it be like, let's go against Syracuse, whilst Whistleblower is considering working for Syracuse. And the reason being that if there's that possibility of him taking that bargain, the tension of him taking that bargain is going to be severely diminished if whatever the job is against Syracuse is uh, is is bad enough for him to not want anything to do with Syracuse. I mean, he already currently doesn't want anything to do with Syracuse. He just wants to maintain his insider status. So, I kind of I kind of want to keep Syracuse benign for now. Uh, because I also feel like Syracuse has the potential of being like the big bad guy at the end with Richard Syracuse, the CEO, who's like this headless, who's like this head on a chassis kind of guy. So I'm wondering, like, I think I think I might want to keep that off to the side. So that leaves uh, Dynamed and Memory Gold. And I feel that if I'm going to pick, what do you, what does chat think? Do you, should we just go with the the medical people or the robotics uh, robotics guys? Uh, just to like kind of show what uh, what notes we have on them. Uh, Dynamed is a pharmaceuticals company. Ambulance and trauma services, hospitals, drugs, healthy and natural foods, non-lethal chemical weaponry, and biotech. And uh, So they have like this, so that's that's their sphere of influence. 
Memory Gold's deal is robotics, artificial intelligence, service industry, cybernetics, fashion cybernetics, and entertainment media. Their deal is also that they're basically weeaboos. They love the Japanese culture and they've culturally appropriated it. Uh, and they've like done fusion cuisine, like they're, they're fusion cuisine. They're the fusion cuisine of the corpse. Uh, so uh, one of the things about Memory Gold that I like more so uh, than Dynamed right now is that Memory Gold uh, is the the pusher character works for Memory Gold. So Nathan Blade's uh, Geppetto character, they work for Memory Gold. And they have the lowest clock and they also have a uh, a thematically close they they they're, they have their deal is is closer to uh, to Geppetto and his whole you know I want to help the AIs uh, than Dynamed is Dynamed is somebody is a corporation that Angel has beef with but at the same time, since she basically sniped the endocrinology and gynecology dean uh, to kind of like keep it even, I wonder. Uh, I don't know. I wonder if if we should go for Dynamite first. I think maybe let's just go with. I think I'm just gonna make the call. Let's just go with Memory Gold because it has the lowest clock. So if things go super haywire, they won't go super, super haywire. And then I can kind of get my bearings as a, um, as a GM. And same thing for the players, right? Like they can be a little more like, ooh, you need to be a little more careful with how we approach stuff in case they kind of like bungle it. Um, only because it's the first mission. You know, first mission, I tend to be a little more, it's like tutorial mode. Uh, they're all gonna, we're gonna see how this this uh, plays out, I guess. So, okay, so we're gonna go against Memory Gold. All right. Then, uh, next step is gonna to be to think about what their employer wants them to do. This should be a simple premise, such as a basic extraction or protection assignment. And think about who would be paying for that mission. If any of the characters are owned, have the job, the job come through the corporation that owns them. Hmm. Okay. So. So. The only people that are owned are... Let me go to my plot notes. So, oh, Geppetto's owned by Safety Net. Well, it's owned by an individual of Safety Net. Basically, he's owned by Safety Net. Um, I think... Hmm. Now, Safety Net's trying to, like, take definite action or whatever. Um, I wonder if this is a good way to introduce this storyline, this story arc here. So, um, Rod Zervis basically got Geppetto cyber forearms in exchange for the resulting information of the liberated drones. Uh, so basically, we don't really know what his, what Rod's deal is. He wants to use the results on liberated, on the liberated drones that, uh, Geppetto is, has basically organized for something. Uh, and the gunpla, uh, the gunpla is what he's, what his focus is. So I think the angel, the hacker, and the infiltrator are archetypes that are pretty straightforward. Like we know what they're good at. Geppetto, I feel like as the pusher, his, or their, um, their shtick is to be, uh, to, to, their stick is about their gang. It's about their, the, the people that they lead. So the gunpla, 
he has these, or they have, uh, I keep saying he, I have to remember, that's another thing, I have to be better at pronouns. They have uh, 10 freed androids that operate in scavenging and activism. They are loyal and specialists, but they make demands and they operate from an abandoned hobby store. So I think I want to focus on on uh, Geppetto's role on that team more and expand on that to really give that some meat. Uh, and it's also going to play into the hierarchic directive he's uh, that uh, Geppetto has, that they have. Uh, improve... I'm sorry improve their standing or impair arrivals among mem uh, among memory gold. See, oh man, I'm terrible at pronouns. They are an insider sneakily operating from within memory gold and needs to climb the ranks to acquire more power. Perfect. So, if that's the case, let's go ahead and look at... So we want to give Geppetto opportunity with the hierarchic directive. And the employer is going to be Rod Service. Don't ask me how, why, how or why yet, but uh, if anybody has any ideas on what Rod would want those androids for let me know because I currently I can only assume it's nefarious <laughs> um, but let's see so um, so then we have to figure out a straightforward, simple premise assignment. Now, they've already done an extraction with Express. Would the androids be a good labor force for something low down? So androids are already used as a labor force. Um, they're basically sold by Memgold to build the artificial islands that the Miami Arc Sprawl is located on. And the ones that Geppetto has collective are, collected are advanced AI that are very, very good. You know, close to human. I just realized that. Um, and so, hi, Jindar, welcome. So I think that's, their intelligence has to be the focus of what Rod wants. So maybe instead of, uh, instead of, you know, an extraction job, what about, why don't we do the, the beloved escort mission? Uh, here, let's do this. Let's have uh, escort, escort, because that was a, a slip of my head. Okay, escort express. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate that follow. If you're interested in, in the sprawl, make sure that you uh, drop in next week. 1 to 4 p.m. is the usual showtime. And that's where we're going to play this mission that I'm crafting right now. So Escort Express is Escort Express to something in order to something. And the reason that I want it to kind of go this way is because then I get to connect the uh, ziggurat closing in on Geppetto and the team. So that means that, okay. 
So the problems, right, are going to be that uh, Ziggurat is going to try, going to try to intercept to, uh, to uh, kidnap Express, or rather kidnap to reclaim Express. Yeah, I like that. That's evil, right? Uh, <laughs> and of course, there's safety net um, is patrolling the streets uh, with an all points bulletin on the team. So they are going to have to um, stay off main streets use cover and uh, navigate surreptitiously is that the word that I'm thinking is that the right is that a right use of the word surreptitiously I know what I think it is so whatever right <laughs> the point is that it has to make sense to me but then again again then again since I'm like showing these notes to you all they should probably all make sense to regular people. Um, okay, so we know that those are the problems. Now, Express has been detailed. Hold on a second. Express has been detailed. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Is it here? The Gunpla. Uh, Express is a source of info on Ziggurat. That's right, because he was extracted from Ziggurat. He is a pretty good leader and a lethal force with packing tape and a box cutter. I'm going to need some more info here. Hold on a second, because I want to know what that job was. I want to know a little bit more about what Express was doing prior. Okay, so Geppetto sets as an acquisition heist of a foreman robot from a distribution facility. Okay. So... <laughs> what do you even do with a Foreman... A Foreman bot AI? Like, ah, oh, jeez. Okay, hold, let's, let's see. Just to make sure I know the definition of Foreman. A worker who supervises and directs other workers. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, so. So this is a supervisor. Cool. I can make this work, I think. Yeah, I can totally make this work. So. Express the foreman. Uh. Well, so Express was formerly a foreman. Let's talk about Express. Express was um, formerly a foreman in a ziggurat. I'm listening to ideas in chat if anybody has ideas because I have 15 minutes to design this mission. Uh, formerly a foreman in a ziggurat facility. Uh, now, Geppetto gave Express the option of choosing a new life. Uh, so I wonder what that would be. Does anybody in chat have any ideas right now? He is currently uh, lethal with packing tape and a box cutter. So... If the Gunpla are about scavenging and activism, Gunpla, scavenging and activism.
So this is what we know about Express right now. Now Express, uh, new, uh, well, I guess I guess Express wouldn't lose or gain new traits specifically, but I'm trying to think of like what a foreman could do past uh, supervising packing tape and a box. And like, oh man. I I don't want to say I wrote myself into a corner yet. I just have to be creative here. Uh, let me go back over here to what the mission would be. So we have this AI who used to be a foreman uh, that Ziggurat is hunting down. So that means that Express has... Maybe Express has, like, had hidden functionalities... That Ziggurat, that's why Ziggurat, because like a foreman bot, but if Geppetto and Express knew about these hidden abilities, and Ziggurat knows about those abilities, then Express becomes more important. So, has hidden ability, like, which is very important. Okay. So Ziggurat, let's look at them. We'll put up this. Ziggurat LLC. They are cheap consumer goods, construction, mining, shipping, aeronautics, blimps and transportation, trash and recycling. Okay. They're basically the Amazon of this world. Uh, they're recyclers. How about a prototype inside the box? that Ziggurat wants. So like Express, because Express has a new body now. The thing about Express is Express was an AI, if I remember correctly. Hold on, let me, let me pull up that job again. A Foreman robot, Never mind. was a Foreman robot. So that AI, um, was then given the given the chance to pick a body that it actually wanted. So let's select a body. Okay, full of blank, blank, which uh, better enforces hidden ability. Is basically what I'm trying to get at. Uh, so, if there's a prototype, okay, let's say, has, uh, which is very important, prototype to Ziggurat. So, what prototype would a Megacorp have put into a Foreman robot? Because uh, managing a bunch of people is just kind of like womp womp. Um, if it was... The only things I can think of are the ability to manage a bunch of like conveyor belt lines and stuff. So like they can set speeds and like they have more of a... They have uh, like rigor like kind of i'm thinking like shadow run rigor abilities like building riggers what that they have like the they have the ability to control a bunch of different systems at once uh which 
I know that's very common in Shadowrun, but it's not necessarily... That hasn't really been discussed in our sprawl setting. So that seems like that could be interesting. Let's go with that. Building uh, and systems. Rigging. And it's simultaneous. Which is why it's even better than somebody who's actually managing it. Simultaneous building and systems controls. I'll, I'll, I'll put rigging. I'll put rigging in parentheses just to kind of help me remember that concept. So. It sounds like escort. If I'm gonna ex if I'm gonna take somebody who has the ability to control buildings and systems, that means Express is a badass. First off, he's a that I mean that is an asset. That's a huge asset. Uh, but they have to be they have to be plugged. We have to make sure that uh, we don't render the hacker useless. So, uh, so let's say, uh, if connected to a main system. It have to be physically connected or Yeah. He is a robot. So they have to like cable him into uh, into a main hub, kind of like central computer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I gotta I gotta be better at swapping screens or figure out a better way to do it all right or just be more mindful okay so it seems like if you have a bot with this ability like a new body capable of body that's better at simultaneous building and systems control whatever the only the best use of somebody like this would be sabotage sabotage or we have to remember okay i have to remember i was gonna say or to help but i realized okay wait it, this is going to be a job against memory gold. So maybe safety net, or at least Rodrigo, is interested in... Um, let's say it's sabotage, right? Because since it's cross-corporation anyway... Sabotage. Okay. We're going to escort express to sabotage something in order to blank. So they're going to have to sabotage some kind of production facility. I mean, let's be... Escort Express to sabotage a something production facility in order to blank. So Memory Gold's productions. Let's hop back over to this screen. Memory Gold, Memory Gold, Memory Gold. 
robotics, artificial intelligence, service industry, cybernetics, fashion cybernetics, entertainment media. What would Ziggurat want to sabotage of memory golds to get a better market share? Maybe if Ziggurat, because the, ro the robots that Memory Gold makes use the construction materials that Ziggurat makes to continue building the sprawl. So maybe... They're trying to sabotage the robots from Memory Gold in order to acquire the license. Or not the license, like the... the yeah. Ziggurat wants the bots for themselves because they have so much shit. Like they deal they deal in so much cheap consumer bullshit that they need a stronger, faster workforce. And so they want the robotics for that purpose. Oh wait, shit. That's that's what Ziggurat wants. Okay, so, well, that's why Ziggurat, I, I forgot. Rod is safety net. And it's safety net question mark. Um, because we don't necessarily know if he's, like, on safety net side. But, prototype to Ziggurat because it helps with uh, manufacturing many things faster. The many things that they need faster. Um, so then, scrap what I said about wanting the bots, because the bots, they already, so it seems like they already have production bots, but by stealing this production bot, they've, uh, Geppetto has undercut Product, or not undercut production, it's uh, has uh, has slowed down production, which is basically, which is, uh, which is very bad for Ziggurat. Well, I, I guess that goes without saying. So, and it's obviously purposeful. It's not like it was an accident slowed down cigarette production. So that was the intent behind that job. So now we're going to sabotage a memory gold something. Memory gold something something production facility. So what would safety net want? Aha. Okay. So let me clear out some of all this. Some of all this uh, Zigger, uh, safety net. What safety net is infrastructure, plumbing, energy, government functions, but privatized. So police, fire, prison, school, transit, public matrix, etc., and weapons. If chat has any ideas to just kind of push me forward. Let me know. So I'm thinking, uh, Safety Net would want to sabotage something of memory golds. They would probably want to sabotage. Maybe like weaponized robots. I can see that being a thing. If the robots were weaponized, or if they had if they had a line of robots that were like not mechas, but like mini mechas. Uh I 
I can see why they would be interested because they in sabotaging that because they manufacture weaponry and they're worried that it's going to undercut uh, that they're going to be more effective in, in policing the streets and stuff. Yeah. Ooh, and if... Oh my god, this is just evil. Hold on a second. If, if Rod is part of Safety Net's police division, I know this is going to piss Nathan off so much. <gasps> oh, this is good. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna sabotage Memory Gold's... Um, I'm gonna call them mini mechas for now because I don't know what they would be. Mini mechas production facility in order to uh, maintain safety nets uh, hold on the market of weapons and police force. And of course, this in order to is going to be secret because they don't need to know what the purpose of it is. I just need to know it. And I could always like, one of the things that I'm going to be doing uh, when I GM the sprawl is I'm going to be doing a lot of like cutaways to what the enemies are doing or what the people behind the scenes are doing behind the scenes and just bring them up front and uh, set up some tension and some dramatic irony and stuff. So I'm excited to play around with that and I think this is going to work really well. If I hold this information and then later reveal it, if I ever need to reveal it at all. Um, Cool. Then I think I basically... Then I think this is basically it. Yeah. The only things I'm going to start thinking about are, like, now are... Uh, what do they look like, the ziggurat goons? Uh, what do they... Yeah, and same thing for the safety net... Uh, police force and then <laughs> hey Ken what did you miss uh, well okay so let me go over this job one more time and make sure that it just makes sense uh, the job is gonna be against memory gold the employer is gonna be Rod Zervas who owns Geppetto so he's basic so he's basically gonna approach Geppetto and say, hey, you know, you owe me for that, for that forearm. You owe me for that forearm. He's gonna give Geppetto the up. Oh, uh, this is something I want to accomplish. I want to give him. I want to give Geppetto the opportunity to accomplish his directive. Put that down here. Um, so the job is going to be to escort Express, the which is one of the bots that they just recently uh, kidnapped from a ziggurat facility, a ziggurat production facility. Escort Express to sabotage Memory Gold's Mini Mecca's production facility in order to maintain safety nets hold of the market of weapons and police force. Express was formerly a foreman supervising. A, uh, a foreman in a ziggurat facility and had a hidden ability prototype basically of simultaneous build building and systems control so like a building rigor uh, which is physically connected into the main system or rather when physically connected to a main system Uh, yeah, I think what you're, I think I know what you're saying, Cross. A standardized robot design with an upgrade slot for weaponization. It's typically used for quality of life services. Yeah, well, so the idea the idea is that these are like these aren't even just an upgrade slot. These are like 
weapon bots. They are made to... They're made for war. Uh, and so I think safety net is not about that because then that means that they're, they become the less effective uh, force. So I can see why they would want... They, basically, that's why they want to sabotage that. Um, so this production facility actually has to be like a brand new... Uh, it's a new production facility. Um, okay, so Express has this ability, and the reason he had that ability is because it's a prototype that Ziggurat uh, was testing to help manufacture the many things that they need to make faster, since they're basically like the cheap, they're the Walmart Amazon of this, <laughs> of this world, so uh so that's why they made this prototype and then Geppetto by taking finding this out basically and and stealing express has slowed down ziggurat production which is why ziggurat is going to try and intercept them uh oh god i'm i'm speaking and i didn't put up my uh mission notes there we go now you can follow along uh okay Now, uh, so Ziggurat's going to try and intercept this job to reclaim Express. Uh, Safety Net is currently patrolling the streets with an all points bulletin on the team. Now, that's interesting because the employer is Safety Net's police division, or secretly working for the police division. And that whole shtick. safety net the job against safety net was a job against the face of that corp so it's interesting I guess it I guess it's a way to to make Technically, it's it, technically it's like I you own. Uh, he's tr Rod is trying to get some use out of this team before, uh, and and obviously is invested in these bots. So this is this is true. Rod is invested in keeping the team safe. Team, uh, especially Geppetto and the gun plot. Neat. Okay. This definitely gives me a lot that I can jump off from. I think now that I've now that I have the job, uh, I can start being an absolute asshole and organize these uh, these notes a little better. So I have to make sure I bring up the, uh, 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 Madre in the news. Uh, there's a public relations hit from Sinon's expose. So I like that because it also helps me kind of bring in um, more, uh, more from Sinon. I've got Whistleblower trying to go after Angel. I've got Memory Gold for Geppetto. So yeah, I think I, I think I have basically like, I have pieces of the puzzle like set in a good place. So now that I know these little ins and outs, now I can start focusing on more of like the little detail works and how uh, things are gonna play out. So, all right. So that was my first mission planning session. Hope you liked it. Uh, I let it run a little longer than usual since Shattered Isles is not on. Um, one of the things that I know that I could have done is talk about uh, what happens when the legwork and action clocks hit certain numbers. Uh, I think I might work on those on my own in a very generic sense. Uh, 
I essentially don't want to super define what those clock bumps are going to do every time they it takes a certain time, only because I feel like the generic uh, descriptions. So let me go ahead and I'll just show you what those what I mean by that. The generic descriptions are enough for me to kind of get a, a good idea of what needs to happen. So like, for example, the team is making some noise, but nothing serious yet. The, the target hears vague rumors. The target hears clear, but unconfirmed rumors. And like all of these things, since I'm going to be showing them off screen, since I'm going to be doing that, those asides, it's like, a, it's, it's enough, right? Uh, the target's more alert, the target's on full alert, they deploy inter internal assets. Like, I don't want to be super specific about what they'll do because I'm, I'm never going to know when the, t the clock is going to tick and what I wrote might not necessarily fit with what... Uh, with what consequence they've ticked at that moment. I don't know if that's a great way to do it. Um, if anybody here has GM'd the Sprawl and has an opinion on that, let me know because I'm perfectly fine just kind of making it up based on what feels situationally right to the story, just based off of the description. Because it just gives me like a mental jumping off point. Okay, what would they do if this? Um, Robots that look as humans with a classic <laughs> men in black suit for the ziggurat goons. I feel like they would do that. That would be a memory gold thing. I think the goons have to be human. But I do like the MIB suit. I, might, I think I'm going to steal that. I'm going to steal that. You don't mind, right? That's why you're here. Um... Well, that men in black suits. I wonder if that's even let me see what because we we were very focused on what their fashion is like so what all of the cultures were like so fast fashion and utilitarian yeah i guess i could see men in black well actually maybe the safety net would be men in black suits. Well, no, those would be more like tactical and whatever. So, okay, fine. Let's do this. Uh, MIB. MIB suits. Good, good. I appreciate that because I need him. Um, so yeah, I think the job is. I think the job is basically where I want it. I kind of want to see. Let me. I'm gonna review my plot map real quick. Show you guys this. So I just want to see if there's any like final little like. Ooh, this could be juicies, and see. Uh, and see what goes down. Uh, let's see. So. Rod is monitoring the gunpla. Purpose is unknown. Now we have a, we're gonna have a little bit more of an idea. He's calling in that favor. Um, Rod is working for safety net. And now I actually get to update that. I have to put um, police. I think this plays out fine. I don't know if I want to get Colette involved. Colette being like this like Ada Wong-esque kind of figure. Catwoman, where it's like you don't know who she's working for, but whoa, what a badass babe. Uh, that's kind of what I'm getting that vibe from her. Uh, I could potentially throw her in as a complication, I should throw her in as a complication at some point. I'm gonna have to think about what her motives are for that, but... Yeah. 
only because it's gonna it's gonna add a little extra tension, especially because it was her fault that Geppetto lost a bunch of gunpla in the first place, got them, had them all killed. So that could be an interesting one. Eric Demage says, Men in black, but men in black the way paranoid ufologists see them. Slightly creepy with machine-like habits. Essentially what cyber zombies are supposed to be that, to have that eats away at their charisma. Yeah, I dig that. I dig that. I... So, let's see. With bee suits. Um... Creepy and machine-like. I guess humans, but creepy and machine-like. Um, yeah, I could. I'm like the. I don't know why. The first image in my head is um, the bodyguard in Detective Pikachu. The one with the sunglasses. And there's, you're always like, huh, what's that about? And then you're like, oh, I can't, I can't spoil. But I was like, oh, that's a good twist. Uh, so yeah, sweet. Okay, so this is a great jumping off point. Thank you everybody for just listening to, for helping me uh, listen, listening to me kind of just talk and blather until I kind of, until I come up with ideas. Uh, and if you're interested in seeing how this all plays out, make sure that you tune in next week to The Sprawl. That's going to be, let's see, next episode, I believe, is the 25th. It is the 25th. So on the 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern, we will be playing The Sprawl. We'll be playing that scenario that we have just created here. And uh, let's, uh, let's see what Havoc I can wreak. So, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, Shattered Isles again will not be premiering, will not be on tonight because they are at MegaCon, Cassie and, uh, and Max. So, uh, basically this is the, this is the end of our night. However, uh, I do know that, uh, something is premiere is on next week. I believe it is Sea of Spears is next week or next, uh, next week is tomorrow. Let me confirm so I can plug that. Oh, wrong. Ugh. I wish I had this more on hand. <laughs> I'm a terrible Twitch lead. I don't even know like what show we have. It's just, it's been so many shows that it's very easy for me to lose track now. Schedule. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So tomorrow is a sea of spears at 3 p.m. So prior to the Game of Thrones finale, series finale, uh, make sure you hop in and uh, support them while they probably uh, seem totally dejected about the trajectory that Game of Thrones is going on. Hey, Dung, uh, you got here just as I was about to leave. But welcome, I'm, I'm GMing the Sprawl. Join me next week, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. on the 25th, Saturday. Uh, this is Eastern time. And we're gonna you know, get to see how this all goes down. There is a calendar, I was trying to pull it up. I was, and I was like, eh, I forgot the website. Uh, so yeah, so the shows are, oh, that's right. Okay, so things that are happening. We have, uh, Sea of Spears tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. Then on Monday, right next, right after that, is going to be uh, Optiverse, the premiere of the Justicars. So check that out. That's going to be at 9 p.m. That plays with the Mutants and Mastermind system. On Wednesday, the 22nd, we'll be playing Once Upon a Tabletop. We're going to be continuing our, our board game play of 
uh, of time stories and we're gonna be playing the scenario a prophecy of dragons and what i love playing i love being on once upon a tabletop that show uh is where we role play board games so that's always been a really fun experience so definitely go and check that out uh ready check returns on the 23rd that's a thursday at 9 p.m and then the sprawl is on the 25th so oh hey when i say the justicars premiere correction the variance is on monday the premiere of the justicars is sunday the 26th i didn't i didn't see the titles my brain's a little fried i've been working on uh this plus my D D prep for today which is like people are going to start showing up in 40 minutes and i'm like I had to wake up early too, so I didn't really get a lot of sleep. So yeah, so sorry, I'm a little, but uh, but yeah. Anyway, so I'm gonna. Oh, by the way, I'm also gonna be doing these let's chats uh, on my, on the sprawls off weeks prior to Shattered Isles. Um, so if you're interested in seeing what the next missions are gonna be and talking to me about how to GM the sprawl, uh, how I'm feeling about the game, uh, and and creating new awful things that throw at the players, then definitely come and check those out. So anyway, uh, I'm going to I'm going to head out because I need like a power nap or a notes review or something before D&D. &D. So everyone. Yep. Same time. I start at four. I so uh, I start at 4 p.m. These let's chats, the show itself where we actually play the sprawl is 1 p.m. Eastern. So next week, 1 p.m. Eastern. The week after that, I'm doing my GM talk. Uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. So, all right, everybody, thank you for the company while I created this, and uh, yeah, have a great night. Bye.